So let's learn a little bit about coal today, right? This dark stuff that we burn for energy. Um, let's start off with the formation of coal. So if we've got a situation around one to 400 million years ago, um, like places on earth today, we have swampy areas with lots of primary productivity, lots of plant growth, but when those plants die, they fall down into a region with very low oxygen. So the detritus accumulates without much decomposition happening because we have all of this water um, and a fairly anoxic environment down here. So over you know hundreds of years, thousands of years, we get the accumulation of carbon-rich material that is not being decomposed. And as sediments land on top of it, you end up compressing that carbon, squeezing out the excess water, and um, the pressure and even sometimes heat of the environment around it really uh, alters the, the form of that carbon-based molecules into a more solid rock-like material. And if we give it enough time, you know, a couple hundred million years, we end up with coal and this is a solid substance. So let's take a look at what that looks like over time. We've got this stuff at first that is called peat. You can find this in certain regions of the world now where you've got dead plant material. It looks, you can actually see some of the plant fibers in peat. Um, it's basically not decomposed. Um, only slightly partially decayed and because there's no oxygen it's not really de being decomposed but there isn't as much heat or pressure squeezing out the moisture so when you burn something like peat it's much less efficient than even burning wood so because there's a lot of moisture content but when that stuff gets buried underground that's where this pressure is coming from you end up first forming a substance called lignite that's brown coal. Uh, it really is somewhat brownish in color. Um, the pressure has squeezed out more of the moisture and condensed the carbon molecules, carbon-based molecules. And so um, it is has more energy content. So that's what's going on with this arrow up here. You have more energy per unit volume when you burn it. Um, still not as efficient as if you left that in the ground for another, you know, couple hundred thousand years to continue to be exposed to all this pressure because then you end up with something called bituminous coal or bitumen, um, very, very abundant. Um, this is the stuff that's been, you know, under pressure for about a hundred million years. It, um, it's got very little moisture left, uh, a lot of carbon per unit volume because it's been under pressure for so long. But because those plants had a lot of um, proteins and whatnot, there's still a lot of sulfur left in them and this becomes more concentrated and we'll see the ramifications of that later. But if you leave this stuff underground for another couple hundred million years, um, that additional pressure will turn the substance into something called anthracite. This is the most um, fuel efficient, energy efficient substance. Um, there's very little moisture in there, so it burns very um, hot and uh, efficiently. Um, there isn't as much of it because it's taken so long to form and um, because of the geologic processes going on, more of the sulfur is removed over time. So really um, ideal for the kinds of coal uses that um, involve the coal in the production of something like steel rather than being burned for electricity, which is a big use for bituminous coal. So. Uh, if we think about resources, um, one of the terms you'll come across a lot is a reserve. That means what's out there that can be accessed. Um, just to give you a sense of scale, we've got billions of short tons. Short ton is what the U.S. calls a ton, which is 2,000 pounds. So, you know, think on the scale of a car. Right. So even though we're down here um, 
in terms of what we can get at mines that are currently in production, we're still in the order of about 1 billion tons. Um, so that's a lot of coal. And then when you look at what is easily um, recoverable from other resources or what we know is out there, even if it's not easily recoverable, we know that there is a lot of coal out there. And so people are very interested in using this. It's very abundant and we want to have access to it. Where in the world do we find a lot of coal? Well, the U.S. is a big producer, as is Russia and China. Um, South Africa and Australia and India are also fairly big producers, and Germany is another one. Um, you may notice over, over the next couple of videos, we're going to be talking about these regions of the world quite a bit. Um, there's just a lot of mineral resources out there. In terms of what is out there to be um, mined, as opposed to the upper graph that showed you what is being mined, there is a lot, a lot of coal in the world. Um, so people are very interested in this, but it has some drawbacks and we'll talk about those. But this is why it's one of those um, substances that was, you know, very early on being used and also why people are still reluctant to give it up because there's so much of it. Within the U.S., we have several regions that are major coal producers. Um, you may be familiar with the Appala Appalachian Mountains. Appalachian Mountains. Um, we have some pockets of anthracite. This is in Pennsylvania and West Virginia, West Virginia. But you can see with this yellow being bituminous, that is the most abundant, and it's what we use for so much of our coal-fired coal uh, electricity, which is, you know, the source of all those mining types that we talked about. So why should we worry about burning coal? Well, there are a lot of major air pollutants that come from it. The first being sulfur dioxide. So when sulfur is uh, burned in an air aerobic environment. It mixes with oxygen that gives us acid rain and acids that can also um, irritate the respiratory system. We also have a lot of nitrogen oxides that form, so the X being for multiple types of nitrogen and oxygen combinations. Again, smog, respiratory illnesses, some acid um, rain production. The other thing you might be familiar with from History is the fact that burning coal produces a lot of soot and more technically those are tiny particles of unburned material and so that accumulates on surfaces. It can influence the um, air quality in terms of having little bits of dust in the air and um, influence the amount of light and that stuff can build up in your lungs and we can have things like lung disease and um, other respiratory problems. As with burning any kind of carbon-based substance, we're producing a lot of carbon dioxide, which as we all know is a greenhouse gas. And the other thing is that because uh, coal spends a huge amount of time underground, it uh, is exposed to things like mercury and uranium, which actually get combined into the coal and they're in really trace amounts so it's hard to um, avoid or capture the tiny amounts of mercury per ton of coal that's burnt but because we're burning so much all the time these are actually really big problems and um, coal production and coal combustion are a major source of the mercury that's in the environment and uranium and other heavy metals that are in the air and that then get into the rest of the environment. Ultimately, when you burn coal, um, you do end up with a lot of ash that comes out the bottom because not all of it combusts perfectly. Um, and so those that ash is often contaminated with these um, heavy metals and the way that we dispose of that is not always um, the most secure and so we have issues with uh, environmental pollution that occurs 
when that gets into the environment. So we do have a lot of um, precautions in place nowadays to avoid releasing some of those things into the environment and more modern um, coal-fired power plant. So just as a reminder, we've got coal that is fed into a furnace and that's combusted. Um, the heat from that combustion makes turns water into steam, which turns a turbine and we get electricity. Um, and the ash is collected and disposed of. Uh, it's just not always in the most perfect way. Um, the gases that are produced have to be filtered and so there are multiple ways of doing that. We have things like electrostatic precipitators. That's what that word is there. Um, that uses electrical currents and um, metal plates to separate the particles, those particulates, which are charged, and to capture them and um, take those out. We have things like scrubbers, which interact, which blow usually um, aqueous solutions of uh, more basic compounds. So bases would interact with the acidic um, sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. And so that's a way of trying to get some of those particles out. You can also have things like um, bag filters, which would again trap some of the particulates. So there are a lot of ways of trying to clean the, um, the air before it is released into the environment. Um, some technologies are more successful than others though. So um, people talk a lot about trying to have something called clean coal technology. Mostly what they're talking about in those situations is taking coal and converting it into natural gas because natural gas, when you combust natural gas, you're basically just using um, very lightweight carbon-based molecules that release only CO2 and water. Um, so they're trying to basically take the other pollutants out before combustion for electricity. However, it takes a lot of energy and a lot of materials to do that. So cost for producing that is very high, which really um, gets rid of some of the benefits of coal, which is their abundant, the abundance of it that makes it so cheap. And also because you have to do all those extra steps, you then have more carbon dioxide going into the troposphere than if you hadn't um, done anything to the coal initially. So, um, in terms of coal, we have just tons and tons of it, huge amounts of supply, somewhere on the order of several hundred years worth at the rate that we're using it. Net energy refers to the idea of how much energy did you have to put in to get the resource and how much do you get out. And because extracting coal is a very low energy uh, process and you don't have to refine it, you don't have to do a whole lot in terms of transportation, it's very easy to move coal around, it's rock, you could stick it on a train, you could stick it on a boat, blah blah blah. Um, the amount of energy you get out is very high relative to the amount of energy you put in. Um, we have a huge industry for it right now, so we don't have to develop any of that. There's really little R&D. And we've learned how to mitigate and reduce the amount of air pollution. However, we've learned about mining and just how land and air and water um, intensive that can be and how much pollution comes out of it not to mention the amount of pollution that comes from the combustion of uh, coal and the amount of co2 and we know that the mining of it can result in a lot of threats to human health whether you're doing it surface or subsurface and then because of the stuff that is combined with the coal in its formation, we have the release of radioactive particles, um, we have the release of mercury, and the particulates and just a whole bunch of other problematic stuff. So not great.